Amen. 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 Oh, shut sure now. <laughs> y'all better sit on down. Y'all ready? Y'all ain't got in that water and got cooled off. Amen. <laughs> no, I started to. I ain't gonna mess with y'all. Y'all sit down. It's too late in the hour now. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, I tell you that. Boy, I ought to cut you, boy. I tell you, boy. <laughs> If you got your Bibles, turn to the uh, book of 2 Corinthians, the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I want to thank those that came out on yesterday, man. It was an awesome, and if you would, if you would, just, would you all stand, stand for the reading of the Word of God? You all stand for the reading of the Word of God, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter. Paul writing to a church in which he had planted and uh, this church was uh, gave him a lot of issues and a lot of things were going to this church and this church that Paul said that they didn't come short of any other gift that other churches had and yet he had to write uh, two books to this church it's bad you have to write two times anybody had to say, the, say the same thing or similar things to somebody but therefore seeing we have this ministry I'm reading at verse one of chapter four of second corinthians chapter four therefore seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy we faint not but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of god deceitfully but by the manifestation of the truth commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of god but if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are lost in whom the god of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our heart to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Key verse. But we have this treasure, in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. You may be seated. Father, we just give you praise and glory, God, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for uh, all that has happened today and this weekend. As a fact, matter of fact, and thank you on yesterday, God, we ended a 21-day fast, and we thank you, Lord, for honoring that. God, and we just want to thank you, Lord, for prayers are being answered. Thank you, Lord, for, Lord, chains that have been broken. Thank you, Lord, for doors that has been opened and some have been shut. We just give you praise, God, for allowing us to privilege to get on, Lord, what you have said that we have. All the promises of Christ in Christ Jesus are yea and they are amen, and we give you praise. Father, now in Jesus' name, let not this people be hindered because of my inadequacies. Lord, I just give you praise. So God, grant to me now the tongue of the learned that I might know how to speak a word in season to them that are weary. Morning by morning, even this morning, awaken my ear that I might hear as I learn. And God, if you speak to my heart, and God, if you speak through my mind, and God, let my mouth say what you want me to say, then I know the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be acceptable in our sight because, God, you are my strength and my redeemer. God, we pray this in the name of Jesus. And God, and now open my eyes that we may behold wondrous things from thy law. Pray this in Christ's name. Everybody say, Amen. 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 Over the last few weeks, we've been trying to convey as much as I could uh, trying to show you or trying to say to you are uh, that <clears throat> a lot of people are looking for fulfillment in life in all of the wrong places. Amen. For three weeks now, we have been talking about a hidden treasure in plain view. Paul just said that we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the power may be of God and not of us, which means that many of us in this room today, the reason why we don't cuss no more, 
<laughs> the reason why we stay home, amen, and spend time with our family is because of a treasure that's on the inside of us. Amen. That we have discovered that having Christ on inside of us are more important than any other thing that we could, amen, accomplish or have or possess in life, having him. And we can say what we want to say, but man, it's a lot of us, if you knew us before we knew Jesus, you wouldn't want to sit next to us. And you, would, you wouldn't want to sing, amen, hallelujah. But we are what we are today by the grace of God, and you got to, you got to give God credit for that. Because if I had a chance to read your diary, amen, I would even want to talk to y'all, but if you read mine, you wouldn't want to listen to me either. Amen. But many of the people of whom are looking for uh, satisfaction and peace of mind in all the wrong places are because many people, even probably in this room, are suffering from broken homes, failed marriages, sicknesses and diseases in their bodies. Amen, somebody. And many of the hurtful things that they're dealing with and don't even know that the Lord Jesus Christ was sent to address all of those issues. And I, I'm not ashamed to say that, you know, somebody say, well, you go, Jesus is a cure-all. Yes, he is. The Bible says he cured all manner of sickness and disease among the people. Amen. Uh, mental health and all these things. Now we're hearing a whole lot about mental health, but I'm telling you that Jesus can regulate minds too. Amen. In fact, there was a man that was, that they told me that was in the tombs one day and he was cutting himself. And anybody cutting themselves, you know, they got some issues. Amen. And sometimes we call mental issues sicknesses when they're acts of demon spirits that have infested people's minds. Amen. Have, have built a stronghold in people's minds. And the remedy for that is a dose of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. In fact, some people sitting in here, you was crazy with bed bug. You had thought all kinds of stuff. But when you got Jesus, he, he, he regulated your mind. The Bible says the man that was cutting himself, they said he found him in his right mind. Come on, somebody. Clothed and in his right mind. Come on, amen, somebody. And I don't care where your mind going, Jesus can bring your mind in order. Priest Jones, amen, somebody. But the problem is that people, people don't know this, and we act like we're ashamed to tell people about the need of the Lord Jesus Christ. But some people are determined that they are going to fix their own problems, amen, somebody, and going to still, or they're still fixated on taking care of their own issues, knowing that they can't do it. Amen. But here is a passage that is without question appeal, amen, by Jesus, to get people to see. And it's in, in the book of Colossians. If you turn there, if you will, the book of Colossians, the book of Colossians chapter, or chapter 1, and I just want to kind of go there for a minute. The book of Colossians chapter 1, right around verse 12, verse 12. Y'all got it? Verse 12, verse 12. I want to tell you that, that this, this man is not just some figure of history. He is not just some figment of our imagination. You need Jesus in your life. And, and we say, well, I don't believe that he's, he, you know, I don't care what you say, but even secular history says there's a man named Jesus lived. The problem is that people don't believe who he, or the Bible declares him to be. Verse 12 says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you. I'm, I'm reading from the, or English Standard Version, so just kind of bear with me. It's read pretty much the same. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain, amen, of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his dear son, amen, in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sin. You see that? In Jesus, we have redemption. We've been bought back. We were sold unto sin. Amen, somebody. We were, do you not know that before Christ came into your life and my life, we were all, we were sinners. We were sold unto sin and there was nothing we can do about it. But the Lord gave his own life to buy us out from the slave market of sin. And now he has, not only that, but every sin you and I have ever committed, he has already forgiven us for it. 
I don't care what you done last year or what you will do tomorrow. All of your sins has been forgiven. But Jesus said to the Pharisees, you won't come to me that you may have life. He said, but if you don't believe that I'm he, you're going to die in your sins. If people do not believe that Jesus Christ is a remedy and God's, amen, God's payment for sin, you're going to die in your sin. And I hate to stand before God one day knowing that God has already provided a way of escape from sin and you deny it. You have no one to blame but yourself. I would hate to go in Walmart knowing that I had a rich person tell me that anything I want in Walmart, I can get it. And I still go home, amen, hungry. Don't have any groceries in my cover. When somebody said you go there and whatever you need is already provided for you. Priest Jones, amen, somebody. But the book says he was delivered. Notice, notice, notice. It says, giving thanks unto the Father, who quite, giving thanks to the Father. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. That's why Paul come back and says, giving thanks to the Father. God gave his own son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He sent not his son to the world, condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. So he said, Paul says, giving thanks to the Father, because let me tell you something. I'm not going to give my son to no sinner, amen, is but come on, no one in here in your right mind will give your children on behalf of people that don't even like you. But you know what God did? God did something different. He knew that all of us were sinners. He knew that we need a Savior. And the only remedy for sin was going to be somebody who was perfect and without sin, and he couldn't find anybody but his own son, Jesus Christ. That's why Paul says, given things of who has delivered us from the domain, the domain of darkness and transferred us unto the kingdom, transferred us into the kingdom of his... In other words, before you were saved, you was on the kingdom of Satan. Amen. We followed the course of this life and we were under the main of Satan, which means you did exactly what he told you to do. But when God transferred you over from the kingdom of the devil into his kingdom, which means that you are not, come on somebody, you have a, you have a citizenship in heaven right now that you don't have to follow the rules and regulation of a kingdom that you're no longer a part of because now you're saved. I wish I could just convey, I wish I could just zip some of your minds to know that you have, the Bible says in Romans chapter 6, that sin shall have not, no, no dominion over you any longer. You shall not be the slave of sin any longer. God has given you power over the sin in your life. You can tell your adulterous thoughts in your mind to get, that's what about casting thoughts, imagination, that every high thing that exalts itself over the knowledge of God brings you captive to every thought unto the beatings of Christ. You can't do that unless you're saved. Every thought that come in your mind that's not like God, bring it into captivity, every thought unto the obedience of Christ. And if you don't know that you got that power, if you don't know that God has given you dominion over sin, you're always going to be drugged around by the sin in your life. You can arrest your own self. Yep, sometimes you can talk to your own fool self and say, fool self, I ain't going there today. I am not going to be able to my a glutton today. That piece of chocolate cake that I think I ought to eat because somebody's going to get it before me, I can tell my glutton, amen as the flesh says, we ain't going to eat. We didn't have enough cake today. <laughs> Nobody in here never had to tell your own self that you ain't doing it today. Nobody ever talked to your own self. God has given you power to talk to your own self. Colossians, I'm not done. It says, and, and notice in verse 14, in whom we have redemption, forgiveness of sin, and he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were. So, well, you know, well, you know, well, so I don't believe that. Well, let me tell you something. Everything that you're seeing, everything, the, those moons, the stars, the skies, the birds, everything. The Bible says, for all things, notice now, for all things were created. In heaven, all created by him by heaven and earth, visible and invisible, whether it be thrones or dominion or rulers or authority, all things were created through him and for him. Amen. Do you not know that all of us were created for the Lord Jesus Christ? You say he was just a man, but the Bible says that, the, even some of the Bible says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So can I tell you something? Jesus Christ, though he was in flesh, he was God walking around in flesh. 
He was what the Bible called him, Emmanuel. God was dwelling among men. They didn't even know that stood before, I mean, hid in open view, amen, a treasure. Not only that, but the Lord himself was walking among men, and men didn't even know it. Preach, Jones, amen, somebody. I'm trying to tell you, I, do, 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 do y'all sense I'm excited? I'm excited because I have the God, the living God, living on the inside of my bosom this morning, and my word, come on, somebody, and when I speak his word, I got the Holy Ghost on the inside of me confirming what I said as long as it's in line with what God has already said. So in the name of Jesus, we can speak things that be not as though they were. We just got to know who we are in Christ. It's, it's sad to have all of this riches on the inside of you and you're not investing what God has deposited in your spirit. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. The Bible says God, everything consists by Christ. Do you not know that Jesus of whom you reject, if he drew himself back, all the stars of heaven would fall out. The star, the moon would fall. The sun would stop shining. Everything are held. The words simply mean in the Greek that by him everything are held together. The reason why we have not spun out of orbit the earth because Jesus holds it together. He is the glue to the whole universe and everything that works in operation with one another is because of Jesus Christ. You said, but pastor, he was just a man like me. Your dad, he was a man. He was all man as if not God, and all God is if not man. That's what somebody, no man ever spoke like this man spoke. The Bible says that even demons, amen, are trembling as were. Not only that, but, but the sea and the waves obeyed it. He says, see, shut up, Jones translation. The wind obeyed it. Because the wind had enough sense to know that he is not just some man. He stood up on the brow of that ship and said, see, shut up. And the waves, bow, they bow down before the Lord of glory. You know why? Because they was able to look through that flesh and see, this is who created us. You know why the water wouldn't let him down in the water? You know why he was able to walk on the water? Because the water knew my creator is walking on top of me. And even the water would not let him down. Why? Because he was the one that created everything. And even the water had to hold him up. Are you talking about this Jesus? Are you talking? Yes, I'm talking about the same Jesus. This treasure that's in us in earthen vessels. That the power may be of God and not of us. Yes. We're troubled on every side, not distressed. Yes. Cast down, but not destroyed. Yes. Always buried about the body of the dying of the Lord, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. Yes. Glory to his name. Yes. Glory to his name. Yes. In Matthew chapter 11, he says, he says, my father has entrusted everything to me. No one truly knows the Son except the Father. And no one truly knows the Father except the Son and those to whom he chooses to reveal him. Nobody knew who God. They were claiming to know God, but Jesus, you don't know who he is. They were walking around and, and, and claiming that they knew God. You know, some of Jehovah Witnesses talking about they know God. They don't know God. God has trusted everything that you, you cannot know anything about God if you reject his son. He said, I came to declare him. No man has seen God at any time. No man, no man. And, and they, they were going around saying that he wasn't God and he was all this, but they didn't know that standing in their presence was God himself wrapped up in human flesh. He yielded himself, amen, and laid down in the wound of a virgin, a peasant girl. Come on, somebody, from Bethlehem. Do you not know that that baby could have spoke this world out of existence? If God, he balled himself up inside the wound of a peasant girl. He stayed there. Even some, at 12 years old, he began to reveal himself. He said, I must be about my father's business. Can, can y'all talk to me? Can, but just a little while I'm talking about, he was a son of almighty God. And he said, when Mary began to try to stroke, he said, where have me and my father been looking for you. He says to Mary's own who thought that she had got here. I mean, somebody she got out of the place. 
He said, should not, not have been at about my father's business. And the Bible said when he said to the Mary, Mary, shut up, because Mary know that that baby that was in her womb, even somebody, was fathered by God himself. He had to let Mary know you just provided the flesh, but God, I am. Come on, somebody. You just, I, you just, I'm just living in the flesh you gave me, but my father, amen, is the God of glory. And Mary knew what he said. When Mary heard him say that to her, she shut her mouth because she knew that the Holy Ghost had overshadowed her, and in her was that holy thing, even the Son of God. I'm, 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 trying, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to get past y'all, but, but Jesus said, no man, he, he said, Jesus said, come unto me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest to your soul. He says, for my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. See, in this passage, Jesus saw people laboring in me and filled with all kinds of anxieties in life in this text and that was consuming them. And, and to make matters worse, the answer to the dilemma was standing right before them and they didn't even know it because he was veiled, come on somebody, in human flesh. Here he was, all the answer, all your anxieties, all the problems that you're dealing with. If you give to Jesus, you can live with stuff you thought you couldn't live with. And you can deal with things you thought you couldn't deal with. If you had Jesus, he said, you, you, let me tell you something. I'm telling you right now, many of us worry about stuff that's not even going to happen. Some of you need to go, I'm telling you something, some of you need to go to bed. And I told you a couple weeks ago, some of y'all need to go to bed. You ain't no night owl. Carry your crazy self to bed. Go home and get some rest. Are you hearing what I'm trying to tell you? We still worried about what, what, what they're going to say on the job tomorrow, all this kind of stuff. Let's go to bed, sleep, pick it up tomorrow. You might not live the next day. Go to bed. You said, I go to bed, I can't sleep. Well, go to bed anyhow. You want to have somebody up all night because you can't go to sleep. Right. Notice now, you and I see people every day. Every day we see people every day. And men, they are going through all kinds of hurtful things. And, and, and they are desperately in need of the Lord. And they are determined that they're going to exclude God from their life. Every day they're going through it. You see them laboring, doing this and doing this. I mean, you say they, all they need is the Lord in their life and it'll help that stuff. You, and you find you, these kids killing themselves. I mean, killing each other on the streets. The problem is not, amen, son, we need more legislation. We need Je they need Jesus in their life. I, I thank God for, 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 for poor Miss, uh, Miss Pramal, uh, uh, Ray's wife, had to keep running out of here because some kid done killed himself, did some crazy over in Pine Hills, over in Island Air. Every some Sunday she had to run out of church because she got to go do the down on some young man and kill themselves. The problem is not, the problem is not the streets. The problem is that it is in their heart. They need Jesus there. And sometimes we sit there and we be judging them and talking about all kinds. No, what they need is Christ. And that's why we need to get out of these four walls and try to tell people about the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> we sitting here and, and your kid's crazy, my kid's crazy, everybody's kid's crazy, grandkid's crazy. And they need Jesus. That's why every time they come around, let's say something about Christ. Say something about it. Because you never know, you can be a plant of seed, and that seed in that hole and their souls will start to germinate and grow. Amen. Then the Bible says, drain up a child in the way that it should go, and when it get old, in other words, how many in this room are like, you didn't get saved when you first heard the gospel? Amen. Some of y'all get on my nerve like y'all been saved all the time. <laughs> it says, when they get old, they'll come back to it. Yeah. In other words, when they get to a place in their life, Everything you've taught them, it'll come back to them. But you got to put something in to get something out later on. Man, I was crazy bad book up until I was 21. I was doing all kind of crazy stuff. But at 22, at 22 years old, something started happening in my heart. Where the world will start to being distasteful to me. I didn't want the drugs anymore. I didn't want the illicit sexual affairs anymore. I didn't want the clubs anymore. Something started living on the inside of me that gave me just didn't like what I was doing. And all. I was around pretty girls and drugs and all this stuff. And I would go to a club and sit there. I was bored stiff. You know why? Because the word of God has started germinating at that time. Every seed don't come up the same time. 
the soil has a lot to do with when the seed, come on somebody, begin to germinate and start to grow. If you start putting, if you start doing the right things in the soil, even somebody, the seeds will germinate. So stop cussing your kids all the time. Stop talking about how stupid they are all the time. You keep messing with the soil. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes my kids get on my last nerve sometimes. So I wanna, I sometimes I want to take them and just... I'm a preacher. <laughs> Come on, I'm the only one in here. Amen. Some of y'all got these good old kids. Don't never do nothing wrong. Y'all got these... I just pray. Could y'all pray for me? Amen. Y'all got these old nice kids that do everything y'all say. But I'm going to tell you, mine don't. Now I got some little ones they done had. And them little ones getting on my nerve too now. Coming up to my papa, watch the stinky leg. The what? The stinky what? <laughs> you have to help me because sometimes, what is that? Amen. I'm talking about now, I got little ones that I'm worried about too. They miss somebody. Then not only that, as a pastor, I worry about some of your kids. Yeah. All those crazy people have crazy kids too. Y'all know all of them have issues. <laughs> All right, Pastor. If your grandkids ain't got on your nerve, now just wait. If them kids ain't got, just wait. They're going to do something. If your kids been nice, wait for your grandkids. They'll put, they're going to fill up everything your kids missed on you. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. In the book of St. Luke, the book of St. Luke, chapter 4, let me tell you something, man. I'm going to tell you because I'm going to ask you all something right now. There's somebody in here right now. You're worried about too much stuff. There's some things that you can't change in Luke chapter 4, verse 16. Luke 4 and, and verse, what I say? And, and verse 16, in Luke 4 and 16. And I tell you, man, it, uh, sometimes these kids get on your last nerve and make you think that you ain't saved no more. You have to keep from telling them off and you know, a hallelujah somebody. Them kids get on your last nerve. They'll make you, make you think stuff. <laughs> Jesus returned to his hometown of Nazareth. And when he got to his hometown of Nazareth, amen somebody, he got to his hometown of Nazareth and to make an announcement that he was a fulfillment of Scripture. And the Bible says, and Luke, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. See, when he was coming up as a little boy in, Jewish, in some Jewish synagogues, it was customary that little boys around 12 years old, especially around 12 years old, and sometimes smaller than that, they would teach young boys and they would give them the scrolls to learn how to read. And they would stand up as little boys and read the scrolls. It was a part of their religious heritage or custom. And Jesus, when he was in hometown, he was one of the little boys or what would get up and read. But this time he had been away for a little while. He must have grown up and he was in Capernaum doing all kinds of miracles. He came back home as his custom was. Come on, somebody, because every Jewish child was required to go to the synagogues on Saturday morning. And every three years, they would go back to Jerusalem. Every three years, it was, it was a law, amen, that all Jewish, especially males, would go to Jerusalem. So Jesus come back home to, to Nazareth, the hometown. He get there, and the Bible says, and he came to Nazareth where he'd been brought up. And as his custom was, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him, and he unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. Watch this now. He coming back home. And I'm trying to tell you that sometimes familiarity, it breeds contempt. I, I, I know who you is. I, I've been told a lot of times, you ain't from Oveda. You from Sanford. We know your mama. We know your dad. I'm old enough to be your dad. I'm old enough to be your mama. All this kind of stuff I've heard said to me. Come on, somebody. Jesus went through the same thing. And even somebody, and the Bible says he wrote it, and, it, and he, he, he purpose to find us a scripture that read, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Come on, somebody. Because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And the Bible says he rolled up the stroll and gave it back to the tender and sat down. And all the eyes in the synagogue were fasting on him. And he began to say to them, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. 
He was a prophetic word all the Jews knew about. Here Jesus come back, this boy that was raised by Mary and Joseph, he purposely, intentionally pulled that scripture out and says, I've been anointed. I am the fulfillment of this verse. All the eyes in the synagogue who knew him as a little boy in Joseph Carpenter's shop. But when he said it, the Bible says they perceived the gracious words that came out of his mouth because he said it not as Joseph's son and Mary's son, but he said it as a son of God. His words came with so much power, they knew that this boy that said it, something was different about it. And the Bible says he rolled it up and handed it back to the attendants. And all eyes were fixed on him, but he began to say, y'all going to say to me, physician, heal yourself, because we, what we've heard you've done in Capernaum. They had, the word had got back on the streets of the, the things he was doing in Capernaum. You know, people know what's been said about, you know, you can go to, you can go to Sanford right now. Everybody, er, everybody, everybody. <laughs> everybody be hearing about what's going on in Antioch. When I go to Sanford sometimes, and sometimes I try to turn my hat brown backwards, you try to look hooded like them. I have people say, yeah, we heard about some people. I was talking to a guy the other day, and or he, was, he, was, he, was, he was just eating, and, and I began to tell him, I said, yeah, man, I'm a pastor. He said, I know. <laughs> I hadn't seen the guy in years. He said, uh, I know. He said, in fact, I, I, I know about a lot of things that, that, that's happening over there with you. <laughs> that's a good thing I'm staying my butt in place, because you didn't hear him. Alone. <laughs> but they had heard he was healing in Capernaum. So they figured because you're a homeboy. Not that they believed in him, but they want to see some kind of trick. Come on, somebody. Amen. You know, people want to see a trick and people want to, want to say, you know, and, and they say, well, physician, heal yourself. In other words, they were, they were because they said, you know, uh, he's, he's Mary boy and Joseph boy and all. That. And, and see, familiarity, it does breed contempt. Sometimes people don't see me. They don't see me as Pastor Jones. A lot of them don't see me as Pastor Jones in Sanford. They see Miss Charles. Amen. When I go there, hey, Charles, how you doing? Charles Jones, how you doing? Let me break me off a little piece to get me another beer. Charles Jones, amen, somebody. But here it's a little different. See, a prophet is without honor in his own, come on, somebody. No, but in his house and his own, among his own people. I go home right now, sit around midway and eat, eat chicken out in the yard or fish in the yard. and Everybody see me as Charles. Other places, y'all be watching me and see how I eat my fish. <laughs> but at home, they don't see this at home, man. I'm just eating fish and spitting out bones like everybody else. But let me tell you something. I don't care what you're going through. I'm, I'm about finished. I don't care what you're going through. I want you to know that Jesus pulled the scripture from Isaiah 61. And now these people are saying, you can't be who you say you are. How dare you say that you are the Messiah? How dare you say that that scripture is fulfilled in you when we knew that you and your mom, we know your brothers and your sisters, we know all of you. How in the world can you claim to be the Messiah? The Bible says in his hometown, he couldn't do a whole lot of miracles because of their unbelief. And the reason why some people can't do a whole lot among us because of unbelief in our churches. Amen. Amen. Some people go and join, amen somebody, some people go over and join another church, some, amen somebody, go to some other church, amen, and the same thing we're preaching here, they'll receive it over there. Come on. Some people go over to the different, some of these big churches, the other ethnic pastors, and, and the word of God seems more be better from, coming from them than us because they know us. We look like them. But the same word they're preaching is the same word we're preaching here. And many of our folks are missing what God has for us because familiarity breeds contempt. And God can't do a whole lot of things among us because we think we can't do things like Benny Hinn and all the other guys has done. We use the same word, the same God. We also have this treasure in these earthen vessels. There is no respect of person with God.
And then I want to tell you, Anyhow, do you not know we can do everything that anybody else do in this community if we believe the same God they believe in? But we can't give in our church like we're supposed to because the deacons or some of our preachers, they y'all give it to us to spend. Them folks not only take care of their pastors and everybody else, but pray, they got full staff. Yeah. Sometimes churches are smaller than us. And we're afraid, well, I ain't getting us money. What money? The reason why we stay so broke because we have not learned the principle of giving. If we learn the principle of giving, you'll be surprised what God will do among us too. We just got to believe God, but we are too doggone cheap. And you know, the same measure you meet shall be measured to you again. Whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. But as a people, we've been taught that if you're going to have some, you got to hold on to some. But the Bible teaches if you're going to have some, you got to give something. This is why we got to preach line upon line and precepts upon precepts because I know the word of God, it works. We got people in leadership just as, just, just as carnal as all get out. And we're leading people. If you don't believe it, how are they going to believe it? They don't want to hear nothing about compass. They don't want to hear about deacons talking about it. They don't want to hear that kind of stuff because we got it all together. And got real quiet now. Well, you were doing all right a few minutes ago until you come there. And every time a black preacher talk about giving money, you think we're trying to get y'all money. I'm trying to tell you something. I'm trying to show you a principle of life. It's in the word of God. We got a treasure in these earthen vessels. God has shown me. Come on, somebody. I'm going to see what I saw. Amen, somebody. I'm telling you right now, I believe God for this place. I'm believing God for the life center, and I'm not going to relent on my faith because I believe that if, if Pastor Wayne Marshall can do it down there, I believe Pastor Charles Jones, and then I can do it right here. If they can have a full step, we're going to have a full step. Why in the world we keep paying this boy, this man right here, part-time salary when he's doing full-time work? Because y'all ain't giving right so we can do it. We got to start raising our giving so much so we can do some things that everybody else is doing. Every time we get in a meeting, we're trying to find we ain't got enough to do it. But praise God, we want to reap the benefits. Yes. But praise God for pay him chicken chain. Yes. Hallelujah. All right, good morning, y'all. Good morning. Hallelujah. Good morning. Hallelujah. If you don't give anything, you'll be given enough so we can pay him a full-time salary. Pull him off of his job, bring him here, and let him work with our kids. Your crazy kids and my crazy kids. He ought not here to have an office right in this place, right here. That he wants to go home. He spent all this time dealing with your crazy and my crazy kids. Now y'all done got mad at me now. I'm gonna close it down right now. I done messed this all up. I, I can't preach the rest of this stuff because I done messed it up at that point. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to start doing it, Antioch. Right. We going in a big building next door. We got the money to get started the first phase. Amen. This is going to be our youth village. We need to have somebody full time working with our children that we can drop them off in the evening at night. We need to endorse this young man. We cannot let this get away from us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My, my, my word has been to our leadership, stay in your lane. Get people getting over trying to tell somebody how to play the music. You can't play, you can't sing. Stay in your lane. Let everybody exercise their gift 
Even somebody, because right now I can't play nothing. I say, I'll mess you up. If you and me, see how you and JP playing together, I would mess all of this up. Because this ain't none of my lane. Don't y'all let me deal with y'all children, because they'll all be crazy by the time they got, they, I got through with them. And please, pretty please, do not let me get in the hospitality ministry because all I can cook good is a good old egg. Y'all can eat eggs every time y'all coming on Wednesday nights. And we got other positions too, too. Praise God. I'm believing God. We're going to fill them up. Amen, somebody. You walk in our church, we got somebody got some mental problem. We're not sending them downtown. We got counsel sitting in this church right now. We got teachers in this church. They ain't got to go to these public schools. We got school teachers in this church right here. We can start our own school. And they can't tell us we can't tell them about Jesus in our school. Y'all get y'all y'all hearing me this morning? I'm just believing God. He can do exceeding and abundant of all we can ever ask. I think according to the treasure, the power that worketh in me and worketh in you. Now some of y'all, some of y'all that are looking at me now. I ain't never heard Pastor John talk like this to him. I know what he wants. He wants us money. Let me read you this. A preacher, an English preacher went by it was a man that was dying, and they said, Pastor, we need you to come by. Uh, we got a very prominent person, our community was dying. The pastor, the English pastor, went there to the place where the old man was, and the pastor said, give me your hand. And the man was sitting under the cover. He would not hand his hand to the pastor. He kept his hands under the covers. So the man, so the pastor said, well, we're just going to pray right then. So on a few moments, the man died. They rolled back the cover from the man after he died. He had a death grip on a key to his safety deposit box. His heart and his hands were locked on something that he could not keep. Come on here, somebody. Don't you die and the money that you could have spent, the time you could have invested. Come on, somebody, go in the grave with you because you're not going to take one dime with you. You, you, you're 90 years old now. You ain't finna build no dream house right now. You better spend some of that money on something that's going to help you in glory. But where your heart is, come on somebody, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Come on, come on deacons, come on deacons, counselors, come on y'all. Hallelujah. Uh, they ain't gonna come back next. They ain't gonna come back next Sunday. I don't. I don't mess this up yet. So we ain't gonna have communion no more. Amen. Hallelujah. But I'm trying to tell you, man. Jesus is awesome. Man, let me tell you something, man. I'm from Midway. Me and my mama had a sixth grade education. Raised six kids by herself. Wasn't no dad in no house. My stepfather came later on. My mother raised six kids. None of us went to jail. Come on, somebody. I was raised in a town where you didn't have ministries in the church. All you had was BTU. Somebody on Sunday morning at a private meeting on Thursday night, only a few people came. Wasn't nothing happening like this where I came from. God did this. And if you're here today, this treasure, this treasure, who is the Lord Jesus Christ, he could change your very life. I don't care what you're dealing with. I don't care what painful things you're dealing with. I don't care. I don't care if they're trying to take whatever. I don't care what it is. If you give your life to Jesus, the Bible talks about a peace that passed all. And would you come today? Would you come and give your life to him? You don't have to join our church. We'll find a church for you. If you come today and give your life to the Lord, maybe somebody says, Pastor, I just want prayer. Come. Pastor, I want to join this church. Come. Whatever needs, come right now. Come right now. Come right now. Come up front. Right. Everybody, Jesus called. He called them public. Come on. Come right now. Let me. At least I can pray for you. I can pray for you. If you got a friend, bring your friend with you. So, so, turn to somebody and say, you want me to go up there with you? 
Come on, y'all. Pastor, you got to hurry. We got Sunday school. Wait a minute. Why does Sunday school teach you got to have a, an hour and a half to, to teach and I only get 30 minutes? Uh-uh, you ain't doing that to me. Not today. Come on, y'all. I thank God for our Sunday school. Praise God for that. But we got to keep things in perspective. Hallelujah. Is anybody here, anybody standing here today, you can't say with convictions that, Pastor, if I die today, that I'm not sure whether I go to, if you don't go to heaven based on being a Baptist or being good, you know, you're not, you're going to go to heaven based on what the Lord know about you. Are you here today? Anybody like to give your life to the Lord? Can I, can I pray with you today? Anybody here today? Anybody here today? And as a pastor, I'm saved and know I'm saved. I believe God will lead me to join this church. I, pastor, I want to help you in this work. You want to come partner with us? Anybody here that's not a member been coming, but today you want to become a member? Are you here? Pastor, I'm saved and know I'm saved. I just need prayer. Can I pray for all of you, everybody in this room? Right, you came for something, isn't it? Listen, you got faith. Every Sunday we read, he that come to God must believe that he is and that he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. He said, if you don't play no games with me, I won't play with you. All I want you to do is to believe me by faith. And faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. you got to call things that be not as though they were. I want you to pray with the Father in Jesus' name. I thank you so much, God, for these people that have come here today. And Father, there's a man standing right here right now Lord, he is toiling with some things in his life. He is indecisive. Lord, he don't know. He don't even know, God, whether or not all this stuff is true or not. That's why, God, we have to trust you by faith. And God, and Lord, give him enough faith and give her enough faith to believe it with what seems to be, Lord, unreasonable, what seems to make no sense. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for him, and I, I pray for her in the name of Jesus. Let this experience today be one they'll never forget. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for that mom and that wife who's separated from her husband and separated from her family. I pray for this man who's separated from his family. God, in Jesus' name, you the one, you are. God, you gave us a ministry of reconciliation. Jesus, you came to reconcile us, not only to God, but reconcile us to things that have, we've been torn apart from. So, Lord Jesus, we accept you today. Lord, as that person who can make a difference in our life. Father, I pray for these around this altar. And whatever the needs are, and you know what they are, I ask that God you would grant it, that they might know on this day, on the 26th day of January, they came and stood at this altar. And God, and when you do it, let them be reminded that they came on this prayer. And God, and when you do, not if, but Lord, when you do this, Lord, I'm going to give you praise, and they're going to give you praise too. And Lord, we're going to put a praise on it right now. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.